Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are going to be talking about why hydrogen combustion engines are a dumb idea. They are very cool engines. Uh, unfortunately, they are not the smartest way of using hydrogen for transportation. So in this video we are going to be looking at two key differences between a hydrogen combustion engine and a hydrogen fuel cell and why using a hydrogen combustion engine maybe isn't the smartest thing to do. Now if you haven't yet, you certainly don't have to. Uh, but it could be worth checking out, uh, if not now, after watching this video, my videos on how a com hydrogen combustion engine works, as well as my video on how a hydrogen fuel cell works to, to help give you some background on what's going on uh, between these two different things. But in this video we're going to get into two major differences and why using a hydrogen fuel cell is so much better of an idea. So first we need to talk about the reactions and so we're going to be looking at the process, the chemical process uh, that's occurring with each uh, to determine you know what's the advantage here for fuel cells. So ultimately out on the surface you know the very basic reaction we have 2H2's hydrogen plus O2 oxygen and then we end up with 2H2O. So from our hydrogen combustion engine our only emission is water. That sounds awesome. With a fuel cell uh, your reaction same thing. 2H2 plus O2 gives you 2H2O. Your only byproduct is water. Awesome. If both of these were true that'd be wonderful. No difference between the two. Unfortunately, with this hydrogen combustion engine, because you have the heat of combustion, that's what you're using uh, to create that mechanical energy. Uh, you're using heat and then you're pressing down that piston. Uh, the heat in that uh, combustion chamber uh, excites these oxygens and nitrogens and they combine together and they form these nitrogen oxides. So that's the bad news. You don't want to form nitrogen oxides. They're terrible for your health. They're not great for the world. You don't want them. Uh, the good news is there's no carbon introduced in the equation so you don't have any carbon emissions uh, but unfortunately you are producing nitrogen oxides. With fuel cells the equation also is not as simple as it looks up here so really what's happening is you're taking your two H2's you are then using a catalyst to rip away the electrons from these hydrogen atoms so you're now left with four positively charged hydrogen atoms. Uh, those electrons go off to do great things like power your vehicle or you know whatever else they're going to power and then they come back eventually because they're very kind so they come back they reform with that uh, those four H pluses that you have created earlier and then you introduce outside air to that equation. In that outside air is oxygen so you take that 4H plus you add to that the four electrons you add to that the oxygen and you end up with 2H2O. So your chemical process here you don't uh, have any nitrogen oxide emissions you don't have any carbon emissions uh, from an environmental standpoint fantastic because your entire process all your byproduct is just water. Great. All right, so reason number one fuel cells are better is for emissions. Reason number two is for efficiency. And so if we look at a combustion engine, you of course have your fuel tank that sends fuel to your engine. The engine sends that uh, power through a transmission that goes to a differential and then eventually powers your wheels. So gasoline engines, hydrogen engines, they're generally going to be somewhere in the 25 to 35% efficiency range. Let's just assume a pretty decent estimate that we get 25% efficiency uh, once we get to the wheels. So of that fuel energy, we have 25% of it actually helping to move that vehicle forward. Fuel cells, on the other hand, you start with a hydrogen tank. You send that hydrogen to the fuel cell. That's where this reaction right here is occurring. Then you create, uh, you send those electrons off to do wonderful things. They go to the converter. This is operating somewhere around about 60% efficiency. Uh, some could be better, some could be a little bit worse sending from that converter to your power control unit which then goes to your uh, motor uh, your electric motor and then from your electric motor to your gear reduction and then you of course do have a battery and you can help use that battery also to regenerate uh, energy so when you're slowing down you can recover some of that energy Another efficiency benefit of using it in this style here uh, with that hybrid style with the battery there. So you're basically you have an electric car that's powered by using hydrogen uh, because you've got that electric motor up front. Uh, so to the wheels you could be getting somewhere around 50% uh, efficiency from what you started with. The amount of energy that you started with uh, and also taking into consideration that you're going to get some of it back as you're slowing down. So 
It could be a little bit higher, it could be a little bit lower, uh, but let's say it's 50% here and 25% here. Well, double the efficiency. So here, one of the bad things about hydrogen is that it doesn't have a low energy density by volume. Uh, so it requires a large amount of space in order to have a lot of energy. Well, the downside to that is it means you have to have a massive fuel tank if you want to have a long range. So if you have something like these two vehicles and one of them is twice as efficient, that means if you want them to both go the same distance, this one's going to have to have a fuel tank that's twice as large. That's going to take up a ton of space, cargo space, passenger space, not good. You don't want that. Uh, so the advantage goes here to having uh, a much smaller hydrogen tank. Also, you're instantly doubling your fuel cost uh, if you're half as efficient. So you're gonna pay a lot more uh, in fuel cost. Hydrogen is quite expensive uh, per gallon. Uh, so not a great thing if you know it's, it's not very efficient and it has poor emissions versus something that has uh, basically no carbon emissions, no nitrogen oxide emissions, and it doesn't have, uh, as we were discussing, it's much more efficient at getting that power to the ground. Now, of course, you know, where that energy comes from is important. And that's another thing here. If this is more efficient and hydrogen is very expensive, and let's say, you know, in the ideal world, you need renewable energy to be creating that hydrogen for this entire scenario uh, to be environmentally friendly. So you need half the energy. Uh, and so that means you have, need half those renewable energy producing resources if the vehicle is twice as efficient. Uh, so, you know, kind of a cascading advantage to having uh, in a more efficient drivetrain, you know, you've got more passenger space, uh, you don't need as much energy produced for it, uh, you pay less in transporting it. Now, the one advantage that this combustion engine certainly does have is this type of style right here generally will cost less. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, compared to a gasoline engine, is it all that much of an advantage? Uh, not necessarily. So if you're going to use hydrogen, it makes a lot of sense to use it in a fuel cell rather than as a combustion engine, which is disappointing news for all the car enthusiasts around the world. Unfortunate, sad, Quite a bummer. I uh, would love to hear you guys' feedback in the comments below. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, you know what to do. Thank you all so much for watching.